poor universe, its demise announced right in its prime. At only 13.8 billion years old, when you peer across the multiverse, it's barely middle age, and yet it sadly dwindles here in hospice. Is it a Galactus infestation? The Unicronobetes? Time to let go, move on, and find a new universe, because this one is all but dead and gone, and but a shell of its former self. The news of imminent demise was recently broadcast in mid-2015. And looking on research at the light coming from over 200,000 galaxies, they found that the galaxies are putting out half as much light as they were 2 billion years ago. So if the math is right, less light equals more death. So tell it to me straight, Dr. Spachemin, how long have we got? Astronomers have known for a long time that the universe was much more active in the distant past when everything was closer and denser and better. Back then, more of it was the primordial hydrogen left over from the Big Bang, supplying galaxies for star formation. But currently, there are only one to three new stars formed in the Milky Way every year, which is pretty slow by Milky Way standards. Not even at the busiest time of star formation, our Sun formed five billion years ago. And five billion years before that, just a short four billion after the Big Bang, star formation peaked out. There were 30 times more stars forming then than we see today. So when stars were formed actually makes a difference. So for example, the fact that it took so long for our sun to form is a good thing. The heavier elements in the solar system, really anything higher up the periodic table from hydrogen and helium, has to be formed inside other stars. Main sequence stars like our own sun spew out heavier elements from their solar winds, while supernovae created the heaviest elements in a moment of catastrophic collapse. Astronomers are pretty sure we needed a few generations of stars to build up enough of the heavier elements that life depends on, and we probably wouldn't be here without it. Even if life did form here on Earth billions of years ago when the universe was really cranking, it'd wish it was never born. With 30 times as much star formation going on, there would be intense radiation blasting away from all these newly forming stars and their subsequent supernova detonations. So be glad life formed when it did. Sometimes a little quiet is better. So how long has the universe got? It appears that it's not going to crash together in the future, it's just going to keep on expanding and expanding forever and ever. In a few billion years, star formation will be a fraction of what it is today. In a few trillion, only the longest lived, lowest mass red dwarfs will still be pushing out their feeble light. And then one by one, galaxies will see their last star flicker and fade away into the darkness. And then there will only be dead stars and dead planets cooling down to the background temperature of the universe as their galaxies accelerate from one another into the expanding void. And eventually, everything will be black holes or milling about waiting to be trapped in black holes. And these black holes themselves will take an incomprehensible mighty pile of years to evaporate away to nothing. So yes, our universe is dying. Just like in a cheery Sartre play, it started dying the moment it began its existence. According to astronomers, but the universe will never truly die. It'll just reach a distant future when there's so little usable energy, it'll be mostly dead. Dead enough? Dead inside. As Miracle Max knows, mostly dead is still slightly alive. So who knows what future civilizations will figure out in the Google years between then and now. Too sad? Let's wildly speculate on futuristic technologies advanced civilizations will use to outlast the heat death of the universe or flat out cheat death and respark it into a whole new cycle of universal renewal. Don't forget to stick around for the blooper. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe or like it on Facebook. Never miss an episode. And if you're into other big facts about the universe, here's a link to our Big Bang and Cosmology playlist. Thanks to Shu Chan. Anna Jackson, Scott Vetter, Michael Seeley, and the members of the Guide to Space community who keep these shows rolling. Love space science? Want to see episodes before anyone else? 
get extras, contests, and shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team, click here and get in on the action. As their galaxies accelerate, sorry, I'm... Don't move. Don't move. Okay. You're not allowed to move anymore. All right. Not on this one.